I've been meaning to make this video for a long time, so let's begin. All orchid lovers, sooner or later, is going to wonder if it's possible to somehow propagate orchids at home. How do you get another copy of your favorite orchid from your home collection? Like many plants, orchids can be propagated vegetatively, and this is very easy to do at home. Monopodile orchids, such as Phalaenopsis, can be propagated simply by dividing the stem, cutting it into two separate plants. On our channel, there are two videos with detailed instructions and subsequent results for propagating an orchid this way. The link will be in the description. Sympodial orchids, such as Dendrobium, can be easily propagated by separating the leafy pseudobulbs from the mother plant. But sometimes all orchids may start to grow a young cakey plant. Keiki is a Hawaiian word meaning child or infant. What causes orchids to start producing tiny copies of themselves on the flower stalk or at the bottom of the stem is still poorly understood, and this fact makes this process most intriguing. Are there any means to stimulate such growth? And so I decided to look on YouTube and just on the internet, and I was shocked by how many new methods were proposed. Previously, I had only heard about cytokinin cakey paste, which gives very questionable results. And here, look, almost everything you have in your kitchen can be used as a growth stimulator for orchid cakey, from a variety of spices to banana peels. I chose one method for myself and decided to repeat everything step by step. I'm going to go through the entire process in chronological order so you can judge the results of this method for yourself. Exactly as shown in the video, I'm going to take a healthy, well-developed orchid where the flower peduncle blooms have faded and have been preserved in good condition. On the peduncle, there are four developed embryonic node buds from which I will try to clone. As a stimulant and as recommended in the video, I will use an aloe vera plant leaf. I cut a piece of the aloe leaf and rub the orchid peduncle with the aloe juice for a long time, very persistently, as recommended in the video. I dry it a little and fix it with cotton swabs in places located just below the nodes, as I understand this is for additional moisture. I spray them generously with water and place them on a warm and sunny windowsill. In the video, the author claims that the orchid babies will begin to grow in a crowd and results will appear in 40 days. Of course, aloe extract contains an abundance of phytohormones, such as indole-3-acetic acid or auxin, gibberellins, and abscisic acid. I believe this is what the author of the video is aiming at. But if you think about it and figure out what can happen to a flower bud under such influence of these phytohormones, is it possible to use aloe vera to force an orchid to clone itself for no apparent reason? For example, quote, indole-3-acetic acid has many different effects, such as inducing cell elongation, and cell division with all subsequent results for plant growth and development. Gibberellins are plant hormones that regulate various developmental processes, including stem elongation, germination, dormancy, flowering, flower development, and leaf and fruit senescence or biological aging. Abscisic acid functions in many plant developmental processes as well, including seed and bud dormancy, the control of organ size, and stomatal closure. End quote. As we can see from this, these hormones stimulate such different processes and are often antagonistic to each other. Because they are present in large quantities in aloe leaves, it is absolutely impossible to say that they are capable of forcing an orchid to clone itself out of the blue. This is what we observe as a result of these manipulations. My orchid, instead of starting to produce numerous cakeys, as promised in the video, instead produces a new peduncle, and not on the old peduncle, but in a new place at the base of the stem from a different bunch of stem cells. And the old peduncle begins to slowly turn yellow and die, pumping all of its stored sugars back into the stem and leaves. Perhaps this was due to the presence of a large number of gibberellins in the aloe vera leaf. After all, it is exactly gibberellin that triggers the processes of aging and death. However, all my searches for any scientific experiments or articles on this topic were unsuccessful. But how are these creators managing to deceive us, showing us such amazing growth results of such young orchids? And so I took my super glue. But I don't really want to tear my young cakey orchid from the mother plant and glue it onto a peduncle to create a fake video. It takes a lot of time for such a young orchid to grow and develop. Therefore, I'm abandoning this idea 
and I'm going to begin to carefully analyze these fake videos over and over again. So I think I finally figured out how they do it. I don't think the creators of this hoax take baby orchids from other orchids. First of all, even if one has a lot of orchids in, say, a flower shop or a garden center, the development of keiki is a unique and spontaneous phenomenon. It would be a huge waste for any orchid grower to destroy a baby orchid just to make one fake video. There is only one way to produce such similar videos in such a short period of time, and this is replacement. Many of these counterfeits, as I understand it, are produced in countries with warm climates and an abundance of tropical plants available year-round. There are many tropical foliage that can be used to imitate a young orchid on a flower stalk. For this purpose, you can use the leaves of green tradescantia. Unfortunately, I could only find variegated varieties, so I used leaves of goldfish nemanotanthus to imitate smaller keiki, and Madagascar jasmine or stephanotis leaves to imitate older baby orchids. For example, this is what I got. How does it look? I didn't even try too hard to make it look real. Fascinating, isn't it? I understand perfectly well how difficult it is to distinguish a true video from a fake video, especially now with Photoshop, AI-generated images, silicone artificial flowers that are all widely available to everybody. The entire internet is filled with these kinds of videos. YouTube, for example, is filled with many channels tirelessly churning out similar topics, similar videos with millions of views, subscribers, and hundreds of comments. And this is not surprising, since for just a small fee, you can easily buy subscribers, views, and comments. I hope that for most people, this is no longer a secret. I don't understand why people do this. Is it just to get more clicks, generate profit, or are there other goals being pursued here? But there is only one way to distinguish truth from deception. Understanding the biological mechanisms that occur with orchids during vegetative propagation. If you're a person who not only absorbs what is shown on the internet, but a person who themselves is trying to learn about the natural features of growing orchids, then no one will ever be able to deceive you. Yes, the orchid actually produces cakey clones on peduncles from nodal buds because there are meristem cells from which flowers normally always develop. But under certain conditions, a baby orchid suddenly begins to grow spontaneously. This is a natural mechanism for vegetative propagation of orchids. In nature, orchid flower stalks can break and fall from the tree into a substrate or moss, and under favorable conditions, they can give rise to a new plant. If spontaneity is possible in nature, then we can try to stimulate natural conditions and try to forcefully multiply orchids at home or in the laboratory. Here is a snippet from a scientific article written by a scientist from the University of California that I recommend everyone read. The link is in the description. It reads, quote, about 120 years ago, British orchid growers placed Phalaenopsis flower stock nodes in peat and produced plantlets from their buds. This method of propagating Phalaenopsis is a prehistoric, simple, or crude form of micropropagation because the X plant, a bud or a stock section, was taken from a mature plant, placed in or on a medium, could be moss, albeit non-sterile, and cultured until it produced a plantlet or died. The method provided a means of mass rapid propagation for Phalaenopsis and also showed that Theodore Schwann was right in suggesting in 1939 that isolated buds can be separated from the plant and continue to grow. End quote. That's why I know that many videos on propagating orchids from flower stalks on YouTube are fake. And I'll explain why. First, the timing is wrong. The entire process from beginning to the moment when the baby orchid can be placed in an individual pot usually takes up to 10 to 12 weeks or even more, not three to five weeks, as most of these creators in these dubious videos claim. Believe me, it is impossible for a new cakey orchid to grow in 30 to 40 days. Secondly, under normal conditions, a healthy, intact orchid will prefer the flowering process rather than the cloning itself, which is what we are fortunate to observe as a result of this experiment. Vegetative self-cloning of orchids is a spontaneous and understudied process in nature. Usually this happens for the purpose of self-preservation as a species in critical conditions. This can occur when the orchid is damaged with missing parts of its crown or apical point or growing in conditions with insufficient sunlight, moisture, or nutrients. 
and the orchid is forced to produce little clones of itself in order to have a chance to change its location to a more advantageous one. In short, in nature, spontaneous cloning itself is most often triggered as a species survival mechanism. Otherwise, the orchid will prefer to bloom and disperse its tiny dust-looking seeds with the normal exchange of genetic information. A broken peduncle that has fallen into the forest floor or substrate is capable of forming baby orchids. Since it has stored sugars in the stem and is capable of participating in photosynthesis. And thirdly, these videos are 100% fake if you see creators attaching several cakeys in one place. From one bud, in natural conditions, only one baby orchid can grow. Definitely not a bunch, and usually one on a peduncle. This is too energy intensive of a process for an orchid, and as we know, nature is too rational to allow irrational things to occur. But how do you think the orchid industry, whose turnover is approaching a billion dollars, can today satisfy the growing demand of the world market? Using garlic or potatoes? No. For many people, this remains a big mystery. You should know that for most varieties of modern orchids, they are highly hybridized, genetically modified, patented, and therefore cannot be propagated by seeds. There is a video on our channel explaining how polyploidy and gene mutations can affect the health of modern orchids. The link is in the description. Now please pay attention, because of what I'm about to reveal to you will completely confirm everything that I have said. At the beginning of the last century, one brilliant professor of botany, Noel Bernard, foreseeing the future and did predict Quote, that a time would come when orchid gardens will include laboratories, end quote. This scientific work contains the story of how hundreds of scientists around the world have worked for centuries on effective methods of propagating these beautiful flowers. Quote, in 1949, Doctor of Botanical Sciences Gavina Roeder is the inventor not only of orchid micropropagation, but also of mass rapid clonal propagation of plants in vitro, end quote. In the laboratory under sterile conditions, orchid growers place flower nodes with buds on a nutrient medium containing about 50 components, including salts, microelements, amino acids, vitamins, phytohormones, enriched with coconut water, yeasts, and extracts of other plants. This is then placed in an incubator under controlled conditions of temperature, pressure, and humidity for an average of 8 to 10 weeks. The waste level is about 30%. X plants of cultivated orchids die due to browning. This is an oxidation process caused by polyphenol oxidase, or PPO for short. This process is very difficult to control, and many researchers are still working on this issue. This is how orchids are grown commercially around the world until the early 21st century. To meet growing market demands and reduce costs, orchid propagation is now done by stimulating the growth of PLBs, or protocorm-like bodies, from meristem cells found in the apical meristem of orchids, apical meristem of roots, meristem cells of primordial and young leaves, and of course, meristem cells of flower stalk nodes. By dividing one group of cells into several groups in vitro, producers can now grow not just one orchid from one, bud for example, but many, stimulating in vitro the development of protochrome-like bodies or somatic embryos, which as they develop, will then become baby orchids. I hope you understand now how this process is labor-intensive, energy-consuming, and very complex, and it's far from simply sticking an orchid flower spike into aloe, potatoes, tomatoes, bananas, and other so-called miracle cures used by cunning crooks for supposedly propagating orchids. As a result of all these manipulations, only one thing can happen. Browning, rotting, and nothing more. If you see videos like these, avoid them. Thank you so much for watching.